I checked any sound. One, two, one, two. Can you guys hear me? Hey, Cranberry, welcome. Thank you. Uh, Michael, Margaret. Okay, tonight, Lord willing. If you guys can't hear me, let me know. Okay, hi, Margaret. The, uh, the study that I had planned to share, I've labeled World Without End. And we're going to look at a few verses. The main verse. Okay, good. Hey, Green Eyes. Uh, what's the verse? The verse that the, the target verse, Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 21. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout, throughout all ages, world without end. Now, obviously, I mean, of course, on the surface, we, we understand that God has a plan to bring, a, uh, to bring about a new world. Uh, the physical world, the earth, the sun, moon, and the, the stars. Uh, no sound? Hmm. Try to refresh. If no sound. I think Cranberry has sound. Uh, what about you, Michael? Can you hear me? Mike Check, can you hear me? If you don't have sound, uh, maybe just try to leave. Try to leave uh, Pal Talk and come back. Okay. Okay, uh, Michael has sound. Yeah, that happens from time to time. It, it's just a pal talk uh, glitch, uh, a glitch in the system itself with pal talk. So you just got to try to refresh. All right, anyway, uh, we're looking at world without end. And I mentioned just now that we, at least I believe that there's going to come a time when God is going to uh, recreate new heavens and a new earth. Uh, but today we want to look at the, the spiritual nature of it. I mean, we've seen from a lot of other areas of the Bible how it's more important, Lord willing, to focus on the how these verses relate to the way God is dealing with the church. Okay, And I'll also try and share a couple of verses dealing with uh, eternity so that the world without end if we want to look at the the physical side, that also is relating to Christ, who is from everlasting. All right, but uh, in another study, I know I've offered that at the end, who is that representing? The end is Christ, right? Revelation 22, verse 3. I am Alpha and Hold on one second. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. The beginning and the end. God declaring the end from the beginning. How about now, Margaret? Can you hear me? Let me let me remove the uh, the red dots. Sound. So God declaring the end from the beginning. Isaiah 46 verse 10. <clears throat> declaring the end from the beginning, from ancient times, ancient times of things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Margaret, can you hear me now? And then we read uh, in 1 Peter 1.19, receiving the end of your faith. Did you ever wonder about these verses? The end of your faith. 
I think today by God's grace, uh, if we see that the end there is Christ, then we can substitute it that the believers receive Christ. We still have no sound. Hmm. Uh, not sure what to tell you. Try testing your audio. Um, or leave Pal Talk altogether. Or reboot. Close Pal Talk and then come back. Okay, so First Peter 1 9, receiving the end of your faith, even a salvation of your soul. So the believers, uh, when Christ is revealed, they come the truth. They come the truth. Yeah, uh, Michael, yeah, just let her know. Because it seems like it might be uh, something relating to her computer or phone. Christ is the end of the law, Romans 10.4. Christ is also the law. Babylon is the law. So you see how God can use a variety of terms. And that's why sometimes it's a little bit tricky uh, in understanding the Bible. You know, because God can use uh, a variety of different terms to point to the same person, the same entity. Um, James chapter 5 verse 11 and have seen the end of the Lord well on the surface that verse doesn't seem to make sense right because Christ is from everlasting so there is no end to God but try and substitute again uh, the word end with Christ I have seen or have seen Christ the Christ of the Lord Any sound now? That the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 11. And this idea of hoping unto the end. Okay, good. We desire that every one of you do show, do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end. And that's the, that's the problem I think many people today they're having, uh, Lord willing, is to not understanding how Christ is the end. So the revelation of Christ, it is God coming in judgment through the Bible, through the scriptures, and setting Babylon against Babylon. They have their own Christ. Uh, Hebrews 3 verse 14, for we make... We are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. I mentioned earlier, uh, all right, I, I'm not sure what to tell her. Um, something's got to be wrong with her, either volume control or, Michael, maybe if you can just, I, I would try to turn off the phone altogether, just close down Pal Talk. Uh, if she hasn't already done that, just close it all together. Exit from it, turn off the phone, reboot everything, and then hopefully that might work. Uh, for we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. Now there it is again. The idea of holding on to the end is not... Okay. Um, is not holding on to a uh, the last day. That, that's what we've thought for a long time. But Christ is not associated with the last day, at least not spiritually. Uh, again, as I mentioned, I don't think there's a problem with uh, looking to the end, the very last day, or hoping unto the end, but it's not something that we can literally touch or find, I believe on the pages of the Bible. Uh, Matthew 24 verse 14 And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached unto all the world for a witness unto all nations 
and then shall Christ come, and then shall the end come. Barely high welcome. So the end comes uh, after the gospel is preached in all the world. No, it's not. Uh, it's not talking about May 21 that the gospel being preached unto all the world. It's talking about, I believe, the the whole church era, the whole church age, from the time when Christ uh, gave the commission to go into all the world with the gospel. So everyone is exposed to Christ, and then comes the end. Hey, Althea, welcome. Okay, so I've offered so far that Christ is the end. We're looking at a study that I've labeled World Without End. And today we're trying to look at the, the spiritual dimension of it. And we may not get into the, the world itself. And I've offered in the past that the world is parabolic language for the church. And if we understand that, then we see that the end that God is talking about really is ultimately uh, looking at the, the state of the church at the time when Christ is revealed. All right, so let's look at a couple of verses where the end now is Babylon. It is the false prophets, the false Christ. Remember, false prophets, false Christ shall arise with signs and wonders, or many shall come in my name, saying, I am. That's the characteristic of the end. It is a time when the world is given over to the locusts the world of Christendom where truth is no longer uh, found so now we have we have uh, the the false prophets ruling and they are the end they come looking like Christ Proverbs 20 verse 21 an inheritance may be gotten uh, how does that relate to Christ saying he is the beginning and the end uh, hold on one second. Up here. Uh, you came in a little bit late. I was offering a couple of verses earlier. The the, the verses that relate, uh, I believe, uh, pointing to Christ. Uh, he is the, the beginning. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Yeah. So these verses we uh, I've offered looking at the end and how that relates to Christ. But now we're also looking at the judgment side. And this judgment side is looking at Antichrist. It is Christ. That's why the Bible speaks of Christ judging. He is ruling because he is the one who gives the authority. He gives authority to the locust to come in a decept, uh, deceitful or to come with deceit and deception. That's why, again, if we want to try to understand, Lord willing, the nature of the end, it is altogether dealing with the name of Christ, the name of Christ. It's the name of Christ that is under attack. And that's why we see the falling away of the church, because the church, even though coming, now the worst part of, the worst part is, I believe, is that they have no idea. That's why the Bible also says that they think that they're serving Christ, and whosoever killeth you, will think that he do with God's service. They, they are deceived. God sends a strong delusion so that they, um, they right becomes wrong and wrong becomes right. It is a time of the unpardonable sin. Blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Alright, Psalm 37 verse 38. We also read, uh, but the transgressors shall be destroyed together the end of the wicked shall be cut off. The end of the wicked. Christ shall be cut off in the sense that their end, their gospel, their God, Ezekiel 7 verse 6, an end is come. The end is come. It watcheth for thee. Behold, it is come. <clears throat> now again, the end is Christ, spiritually speaking. Ezekiel 7 verse 2, 
and end is come, or the end is come upon the four corners of the land. Again, I'm offering there that that's talking about the corporate body. Wheat and tares growing together, all of them in the name of Christ. And now comes about the separation of the wheat from the tares when the end comes. Not the very last day. That would not be the focus. It would not be uh, the, the spiritual uh, aspect of it. <clears throat> in other words, when Christ comes in the form of Antichrist, he comes as a thief. Christ is not the thief, but he uh, allows the, the thieves to destroy the house of God. 2 Peter 2.20, the latter end. Let me not going to read the whole verse. Um, the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Isn't that interesting? I, I mentioned earlier that Christ is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. But the Bible also has a principle. Anyone know what that is? When it comes to the, the, the beginning and the end, anything come to mind that might help us to understand this verse? The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. I think it has to do with uh, this verse here, Mark 10, verse 31. But many that are first shall be last. No, it's not talking about America. It's not talking about, um, you know, we're not looking at the literal nations that had uh, power <clears throat> and then now they become last in terms of uh, the gospel. Uh, although the whole world is in view because we're looking at the world of Christendom, correct? But those who were identified with Christ, God looked at the church as if it had been. Uh, as if it had been redeemed. God cared corporately for his people. But when the church believes that it is the first, it becomes last. It falls in, into the hands of Antichrist. And those that are last, they become first. Spiritually speaking, I think that's looking at the other side of the gospel, the salvation, the believers. They were last in the sense that they were not cared for. Remember the rich man and Lazarus? They were not cared for. And then now, because God redeems them from Babylon, they become first. Or they come to be first. So the first and the last. In Psalm 73, 17, Until I went into the sanctuary of the Lord, describing the wicked, then understood I their end. What is the end of the wicked? It's Babylon. It is confusion. It is God allowing Babylon to destroy Babylon. And that's the end of the wicked. That's the end that has come. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 8. But that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected and is nigh unto cursing, whose end is to be burned. Well, again, that verse doesn't seem to make sense on the surface. How can you burn the end? Or we might say, well, whose end is to be burned, they are burned at the end. Yeah, that's that's what that's about, the verse is saying. But again, we, if we look at it spiritually, we see that it is relating to the end that is Christ. Uh, but now becomes Antichrist when God's judgment comes on the body. Philippians 3 verse 19. Whose end is destruction. Babylon is fallen, is fallen. Babylon is destroyed. Well, Babylon is not destroyed at the very last day. Can you see the, uh, the connection there? If the end is the time when Christ is revealed and false prophets are, uh, are exposed, then that's the end. That's Babylon. That's Christ that has come in judgment. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 15. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed 
as the ministers of righteousness, whose end, whose gospel, whose Christ. The corporate church is identified with Christ. It bears the name of Christ. Correct? And so that's the end that is destroyed. Their gospel, their Christ. Um, Mark 3 verse 26 if Satan rise again if Satan rise up against himself and be divided he cannot stand but half an end he has an end the wrath of God Amos a verse 2 uh, the end is come upon my people of Israel I will not again pass by them anymore. Now again, can you see the, the spiritual connection? It's not looking at the day here. We're not talking about the very last day or you know when this, this world is going to be burned or destroyed. These verses, we, we have to understand that God is speaking in parables. And so the, the burning that's in view is the destruction of the church, the body of Christ. <clears throat> The end has come upon my people of Israel. And notice, I will not again pass by them anymore. So God here, I believe, is describing the nature of the end. It's the time when God is no longer visiting them. They don't have the blessing of God. Amos chapter 8, verse 10. Um, and I will turn your feast into mourning and all your songs into lamentation. I will bring up sackcloth upon all loins and boldness upon every head. I will make it as the morning of an only son and the end thereof, the end thereof as a bitter day. Uh, CC from, welcome, Babylon. Babylon, we believe, I believe it is the world of Christendom. The pastors, the deacons, uh, anyone, and not just those that are in the local churches. But if you come in the name of Christ, you bear the name of Christ, you say, Thus saith the Lord, and you're trying to show things from the Bible, you're trying to, you're, you're teaching the Word of God. If you're not faithful in your declaration, well, then you come under the wrath of God. So you are Babylon. God brings a strong delusion. So that even though you think you have truth, but in reality, uh, you know, spiritually, we would be in, in, in darkness. And that's the nature of God's judgment today. That's why I believe we see the, the falling away of the church and all the unrighteousness going on in the body of Christ. All right. Now, the name of the study is World Without End. I've offered so far... Um, some verses showing or uh, looking at how some verses are tying into Christ. He is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. So now, and I also mentioned, although I'm not offering any verses tonight, that the word world is also parabolic language for the church, the kingdom of God. When God speaks of the world, we're looking at the church, the corporate body, spiritually. And now, if we have a world that is without end, world without end, I believe it is looking at the separation of wheat and tares, time when Babylon is no more. Isn't that interesting? And that, again, I believe would tie in to everything else that we're looking at. It's all about God's relationship with the church, how he relates to the church. And if the end is Christ, but in judgment it becomes Antichrist, well then the believers look forward to the world without Babylon. They look forward to the separation, the time when Christ is revealed to them. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 21 again. Unto him be glory in the church, by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Um, Isaiah 45, verse 17, But Israel, 
shall be saved. Now notice the connection again that God, I believe, is uh, making here. Uh, defining the term. Israel shall be saved. Well, when, it, when does that happen? The time when Christ is revealed to separate the wheat from the tares. Remember Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. There is a salvation, a collective salvation of the body, the gathering, separation of wheat and tares. Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded. World without Babylon. World without end. When God visits the church, visits uh, its iniquity on the body, well then now Israel is saved, the people of God, the eternal church, the believers. They are separated from Babylon. And spiritually we have a new world, new heavens and a new earth. Uh, Luke chapter 1 verse 33, And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there shall be no end. Now I mentioned before again, it's obvious on the surface that we can also apply a, uh, a literal uh, understanding to these verses because we know that God is from everlasting. And the believers, somehow God is going to bring them into, into eternity. And again, what I'm saying is that as, as far as trying to determine or looking at these verses and trying to determine when that's going to happen, when that last day is. Everyone is focused on that. And again, you know, that's why if you try to share these verses, you try to offer the spiritual uh, rendering of these verses to them, they may not understand unless God would uh, open their understanding, their spiritual eyes, so that they see the spiritual nature of the judgment. Because at the same time God is destroying the church, destroying Babylon, He is creating new heavens and a new earth that is a new body. Um, so of His kingdom there shall be no end. Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 27, For thus hath the Lord said, The whole land shall be desolate, yet will I not make a full end. Now again, can anyone tell me what that might be? what it might be referring to. God does not make a full end of his people. But we understand that the believers are chastised, right? Judgment begins at the house of God. They go through the fire. I will bring the third part through the fire and refine them as silver is refined, try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name. So they do not come, although they they uh, they go through the tribulation, they endure unto the end, unto the revelation of Christ. So God does not uh, destroy them as he does Babylon. Matthew 24, 31. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end. You know, again, I was looking at this verse, and I never seen it, I never realized, or at least make the connection there, that God is talking about Babylon, he's talking about the church. One end of heaven to the other. Well, yeah, because if we understand that the end there is Babylon, it is the, the false prophets, the locusts, they come to destroy the crop, the thieves come to steal and to destroy. And God is removing the believers from that. He is giving them understanding so that they can see His hand of judgment on Babylon. So He shall gather together His elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Uh, Isaiah 23 verse 17. Now this is, I don't have the the, the rest of the verse here. So I'll just touch on it uh, so that we might uh, get at least a, a general understanding of it as it relates to these other verses. And it shall come to pass after the end of 70 years. 
70 years spiritually looking at the great tribulation that the Lord will visit Tyre and the and she shall turn to her higher and shall commit fornication with all the kingdoms of the world upon the face of the earth well yes this happens because as God is revealed Christ is revealed through the Bible the end comes and at the same time when the appointed time comes God begins the separation of wheat and tear so we have two things happening we have the judgment of God on Babylon Tyre here uh, typifying the church typifying Babylon she turns to her higher she commits fornication with all the kingdoms of the earth upon the face of the all the kingdoms of the world upon the face of the earth and I think oh yeah there it is uh, verse 18 let me post this one also and her merchandise and her hire shall be holiness to the Lord it shall not be treasured nor laid up now you see this verse I think uh, is, is a little bit difficult to understand until unless we look at the both the judgment side as well as the salvation side what happens in a day of the Lord what happens in judgment well there is a death of the church God gives the church over to, to Babylon and he also redeems the church the same Babylon the unclean body that the believers were a part of he is uh, redeeming this body so he is saving the body so in other words the church is born again not the whole body it's not the whole church that is coming to Christ but rather the elect from the collective body so there is that separation her merchandise and her hire shall be holiness of the Lord it shall not be treasured nor laid up for her merchandise shall be for them that dwell before the Lord to eat sufficiently and for durable clothing uh, Proverbs 23 verse 18 for surely there is an end now is that talking about the last day I, I believe it is you know if, if we're looking at the the time when Christ comes or God destroys the world however that happens I, I don't know I, I don't think I can share any verses from the Bible that would give us information and unfortunately that's what that's what a lot of people are today those that are uh, looking at the dates or they're trying to relate uh, language in the Bible somehow to the very last day surely there is an end yeah the end is Christ the time would come that God would allow Babylon to be destroyed by Babylon. Galatians chapter 1 verse 4, who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world. That's the word that we're looking at. That's the same word as end. And I mentioned earlier that the world, I believe, is parabolic language for the church this present evil world well how does that happen again evil is Babylon God separates the believers he redeems them he brings them out of tribulation according to the will of God and our Father uh, Isaiah 65 now I also want to share a couple of verses here not relating directly or not using the word in but the the idea is the same the time period is a separation of wheat and tares Isaiah 65 verse 17 behold I create new heavens and a new earth <clears throat> excuse me and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind who is the former well remember the first shall be last on the last first the body of Christ, the church, is no longer remembered. In other words, God does not visit Babylon. Babylon is destroyed, given over to the locusts. The former shall not be remembered nor come into mind. So that's the end. Surely there is an end. Um, Joel chapter 3 verse 17. Then shall Jerusalem be holy and there shall no strangers pass through her anymore world without end world without Babylon so the former shall not be remembered in the new heavens and the new earth Babylon is no more 
It is a world without Babylon. It is a new heavens and a new earth. Then shall Jerusalem be holy, and there shall no strangers. Babylon is not considered. Babylon is destroyed, given over to the locusts. Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 15. The Lord hath taken away thy judgments. He hath cast out thine enemies, thine enemy, the king of Israel, even the Lord, in the midst of thee. Thou shalt not see Babylon anymore. See that? So that you and I, Lord willing, by the grace of God, uh, if we come to understand, we see the spiritual nature of God's judgment. It's because God has had mercy. He has brought back the captivity of his people. He is redeeming Jacob through the separation of wheat and tares. And they do not see Babylon anymore. It is a world without Babylon. Um, now, I don't mean they don't see Babylon literally. Of course, we see God's judgment on the church. It's just that the believers themselves would not be a part of it. They're not under the wrath of God. Isaiah 52, verse 1. Awake, awake, put on strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. Revelation 21, verse 27. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination, nor maketh a lie. Well, again, who is that? All this happening spiritually, uh, when Christ is uh, redeeming the believers from Babylon, now there are no strangers there, no wise enter into it, or anything that defileth, they shall in no wise. Uh, so there, again, I, I think we're looking at the, the world without Babylon, the world without end. We also read uh, just a couple more verses, a few more verses to go. Uh, Zechariah chapter 14, verse... Alright, sorry about that. My computer stalled here for... For a second. <clears throat> Zechariah 14, verse 21. Yea, every pot in Jerusalem and in Judah shall be holiness unto the Lord of hosts. And all they that sacrifice shall come and take them and seed them and seed therein. And in that day there shall no more, there shall be no more the Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. Can you see the connection there again that I'm offering? in relation to world without Babylon, world without end. Revelation 22 verse 15 For without are dogs, sorcerers, whoremongers, murderers, idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. So that's Babylon again, right? Okay, I'm going to try and wrap it up. I mentioned earlier that uh, on the surface, obviously, there is a, uh, there has to be, Lord willing, a, a connection, a literal uh, connection to the, to the world or the new heavens and in the new earth that God creates. And I've also offered in the past some verses how the the word everlasting is also pointing to Christ. So now when we look at Ephesians chapter 3 verse 21 again, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. World without end. Spiritually looking at Babylon. World without the, uh, the false prophets, Antichrist. What about eternity itself revelation 4 9 and when those beasts give glory and glory and honor to him that sat on the throne who liveth forever and ever that's the same word in both cases world and the word end and Christ is forever revelation 118 I am he that liveth and was dead and behold I am alive forevermore 
and have the keys of hell and of death. Now, is there any doubt that the believers are going to live forever with Christ? And that's the idea here. That's what I'm offering. Second John 1, uh, chapter 1, verse 2. For the truth's sake which dwelleth in us and shall be with us forever. So there is an aspect of eternity here, I believe, uh, also relating to the target verse that we're looking at. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 21. Uh, Hebrews 7, 24. But this man, because he continueth ever half an unchangeable priesthood. Michael, can you hear me? Mic check. Almost done here, by the way. I got two more verses to post. Ephesians 2, uh, verse 7. That in the ages to come. The ages to come. That's Christ. New heavens, new earth, a new world, world without Babylon. And the time, when that time comes about, in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. So it is through the word of God, through the Bible, when God is judging Babylon, he is also uh, revealing Christ, revealing the nature of Antichrist. And finally, Galatians 1, verse 5, To whom be glory for ever and ever. Amen. So forever, ever and ever, the end. Again, I believe it's all pointing to Christ. Now let me go ahead and post a, uh, a short conclusion, and then we can open for a discussion. So in the context of the spiritual judgment, very important again, as I, I've offered in the past, that we understand the spiritual nature of the verses that we look at. In the context of judgment, spiritual judgment, God appears to be using the world as a type of the church and the end as a type of Babylon. Now, the world is also Babylon. Just different names. When the believers are delivered from the world of Babylon, the world of Christendom, delivered from the locusts, they now dwell with Christ in the new heavens and new earth where Babylon is no more. So this would be a world without end, world without Babylon. Okay, hold on one second. 